Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, something seemed to be watching them. Was it just curious? This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Hey, if you have a real ghost story, share it with us because we would love to hear from you. Call in any time. It's 855-853-4802. Or you can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You can become a premium subscriber with that. No commercials, advanced episodes, access to the archive. You can sign up today through Apple Podcasts. You can try it three days free there. If you'd like to go through patreon.com slash real ghost stories, you can do that. Or go to ghostpodcast.com. I'm Carol Hughes. Harper's with me today. Hi, friend. Hello, hello. How are you? Good. I heard something interesting that you shared with me earlier that I'm a little, um, I don't understand about you. What do you not understand? I don't understand how you don't like peanut butter. I hate peanut butter. I'm sorry. Do you really hate peanut butter? I can't do it. Unless, unless it's a Reese's Take 5. See, oh what about God. regular Reese's Cups? Those suck. What did you say? I said those suck. Okay, well, that's the show. Thanks for tuning in today. And if you have a real ghost story, you don't like Reese's Cups? <laughs> Although, oh, oh, wait, wait, I just thought a positive side of this. So if you and I are ever together and somebody gives us Reese's, we're not going to be fighting over them because I can have all of them. That's, an, that's one positive thing about that. Unless they're take fives. You can if have those. take fives, they're mine. Take five is my least favorite. Oh, so this I, will not work that out. I, okay. Not that I won't eat it. I'll eat it. But it's the Reese's cups. I think they're, I think they're like the I, perfect candy. I can't do Reese's Cups. But Sorry, like, so peanut. peanut butter and jelly? I, I, I haven't had one of the sandwiches in years. Huh, that's just so weird. Like, do, Is it you, though? do you ever remember liking peanut butter? And it's not an allergy thing. I used to. I just don't like it. <sighs> I just, I don't know. I just think differently of you now. I don't. I don't know how to process this. <laughs> I know. All my friends love peanut butter but me. Oh, my gosh. I love it so much. I never want to live without peanut butter. I guess um, we'll just go on and do a ghost story now. Okay. Because <laughs> we have that in common. <laughs> Our love of ghosts. <laughs> so here's a story today, and it says, After several years of living in Chicago and raising three young children— My husband and I decided to pick up our family and move to the suburbs. After months of searching for homes, we decided to settle our roots far enough from the city to have the natural experience with lots of trees, floral, fauna, Wisconsin, and cheese. But it was still within 40 minutes of downtown Chicago and all the culture the zoos, parks, and museums could provide. Our home was in a middle-class community with great schools and a bountiful choice of activities for our kids. I loved my new home. And when you enter the house, you walk in the door and there's a stairway up to the main living room, dining room and kitchen that is sectioned off by three walls and two doorways. Yes, this is important. The three bedrooms and guest bathroom are down the hall. Down the stairs is a large family room, laundry room, bathroom and large office. It sounds like a dream, right? The first year was a good one. Our family assimilated into the community and life was enjoyable. I have had multiple paranormal experiences as well as being an empath. I did not have any experiences for that first year, so I began to relax and believe that perhaps I had outgrown my abilities. I should have been more preemptive as I look back now. I know that we should have found a house that was not within an eighth of a mile of a well-known animal-slash-human cemetery and a river across the street. If would that bug you if if like oh wait, in your house now is there a cemetery nearby? Or your no. last house was there a cemetery? Cuz you kind of no. lived in the country. So, I if if your dad like was like, "Hey, we're moving to a new house, found this great house." And then you go to look at it and there's a cemetery across the street, would that kind of creep you out? I think it would mean. Kind of. I don't know. Kind of. Maybe it kind of depends on the cemetery. Because depends. like, let's think about this. Like, if it's like right, like directly across the street, think about how many windows are going to be facing that cemetery. And that's now. 
Say it was an old say it was an older cemetery with lots of mature trees. They kept really good care of it and it looked kind of like a beautiful park where a lot of dead people were buried. Would that be any better? If it was beautiful and peaceful looking? No, because like think about it. Like imagine you're just in your kitchen and like one of the windows faces the cemetery. And it's like what, twelve in the morning at this point? And you like see something standing over a grave. <laughs> right? It's like, okay, gotta move. But it is interesting that she's an empath and they moved right there with the... Because the eighth of a mile is not very far away. Mm-hmm. That might be like a block. Yeah. So maybe it's not right out of their house, but it's super close. But it says hindsight is twenty twenty, so it is valuable now, but useless then. My children were 7, 9, and 11. I have two boys and one girl. The first time I saw a shadow person, I thought it was one of my children trying to play a prank on me yet again. They were devious when it came to scaring me, hiding in the bushes, on the roof. What? (laughs) The kids hit on the roof? Like, that's not devious. That's not devious. That should get you grounded. (laughs) You don't get to go on the roof. Uh, She says, they were creative little snots. Because my husband often worked 12 to 15 hour days in the city and I was often alone with the kids, they would sometimes use this freedom to do a little night fright to mommy. I was bent over the sink when I felt that familiar tingle as if someone was watching me from behind. I moved only my eyes to look up into the kitchen window above my head in the hope of catching one of the little bandits and scaring them in return. I saw a shape, a medium thing, standing in my doorway. At first I thought it was my husband, but then I quickly realized he was still at work. I spun around and the shape darted away, disappearing around the corner. I sprinted out of the kitchen and looked to my right where the shape had fled. Nothing was there, just a dark living room. I checked on my children. They were all asleep, really asleep. And all I could think of was, what the hell was that? A few nights later, I was washing dishes again, and I saw something out of the corner of my eye dart around the corner of the kitchen wall again. I chose to ignore it and resumed my chores. I'd already begun to get jumpy since the first encounter, and I knew my fear would feed whatever was happening. When I moved into my home, I checked it for negative energies, and there were none. In fact, the house was blank as far as I could tell, so I was confused and annoyed when these occurrences began. A short time later, I saw the figure again, this time boldly standing in the doorway, its movement still, but wavering like heat on a hot pavement. That's a good description because it would be kind of like energy that's moving. That's a good Mm -hmm. description. Unnerved, I turned to face the dark form and it darted off again, this time down the hall towards my sleeping children. I rushed out the door and caught a glimpse of it slipping into my son's bedroom, and I freaked out, ran to the door, charged into the boys' room like a warrior ready for battle, and saw nothing. Sleeping boys, but no figure lurking in the corner. I stood stupefied until suddenly I heard the front door slam shut. Thinking it was my husband coming home, I hurriedly went to the top of the stairs only to see nothing again, and no one answered my call. Over the course of several months, I had repeated encounters with this shadow person, and eventually it became bolder. Whenever my husband was not home, it started opening and slamming doors while I slept day or night. Cabinets and windows would open, and once towards the end of the shadow stay, that's interesting, the shadow stay, I woke up to the smell of gas and found all of my burners on, no flame, and one window open. That's dangerous. That's really dangerous. It was summer and being naturally hot, I always had the AC on full blast and it was certainly running. No window should have been opened. I have a thought on that. We'll circle back to it. I decided that it was time to take a more drastic measure other than simply yelling at the thing whenever it created havoc. I got out of my Nana's, I got out my Nana's Bible and began to say prayers. I left out glasses of water to calm the spirit, planted rosemary and lavender, and did anything I could do to help my situation and keep my children safe. 
My husband was a skeptic back then, and I did not even bother to tell him what was going on since he would have shrugged it off as another one of my strange paranormal concepts. Eventually, the visit stopped. I do not know whether it was because of my efforts or because the figure found someone else to terrorize. He was not the last entity to visit my home, nor was I the only one to experience the awareness of the paranormal. My children seem to have inherited this family gift. My children, as they grew older and into their teens, started to see shadow people, feel presences in their room standing over them in their sleep, and on a few occasions were physically assaulted. The worst of the entities would sit in the upper corner of my boys' room and hang there, arms stretched backward, crouched as if ready to spring, grinning but never moving, perhaps trapped. If you ask why did we not run screaming from the house, my answer is simple. By then, 9-11 had occurred and we we were not financially able to move. By the time we had the means, things had calmed down considerably and the various entities' visits were shorter and they interfered with our lives less and less. Why things changed, I do not know. I'm also not upset by this fact. They still occasionally show up, but I'm more mentally able to shoo them off. I do visit the cemetery right down the road fairly often. It's a very peaceful and great place to read and take photographs. You would not believe how fancy the animal graves are decorated versus the human ones. You guys are great, and thanks again for being there for all of us. So definitely experiences in that house. But here's the thing I said I'll circle back to that made me think. So so it's almost to me, like, she talks about how her kids were kind of little terrorists. You know, they would they would get into a lot of trouble, like the thing up on the roof. So I got the feeling these kids were kind of kids, did some dangerous things. But it's almost like this shadow person was trying to get it to go to their rooms, almost like to just check on them to make sure, because it was always going to their room, so she was chasing it, right? Mm -hmm. So almost like check on your kids to make sure they're okay. But the day with the burners, so gas stove, all four burners are on. They've got the AC on in the house, but a window's open. So the window wouldn't be open because you have the AC on. What if... The kids turned the burners on, not knowing the danger of turning gas burners on. And it was the shadow person that opened the window. So those gas fumes could get out. What if this whole thing was actually trying to help keep her safe and keep an eye on the kids? Yeah. I don't know. It's a thought, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I think now when later when the kids got older, I think that's something different. Because whatever she was experiencing didn't seem to hurt her. It just seemed to be watching her, or maybe watching over her or the kids, or maybe was curious about her. But it kind of seems like whatever was happening to the kids, that was a different thing. That seems darker and different. That was definitely darker. I don't like how, like, the thing described in the kids' room, like, almost like a spring. Ugh, I can't do that. Almost like a what? Like, like almost like right into like spring, like oh. out from the corner of the kids' room. I don't like the arms stretched backward. How would you even do that? Exactly. That is creepy to me. Like, that's like something you'd see in a scary movie that would just give you the chills. Like, oh, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. like when the, and Reagan and the Exorcist, when her head goes all the way around. That's creepy. Because it's inhuman. Yeah. An arm stretched backwards, crouched as if ready to spring, grinning but never moving, perhaps trapped. That's just weird. And, you know, a lot of times when kids are younger, they have the experiences and outgrow them as they got older. In her case, it was a little backwards. I don't know. I just think that there's different things in that house. I do, too. And maybe living so close to a cemetery, maybe it's... Kind of like a little... Beacon. Yeah, like things come in and out. Because it doesn't yeah. seem like it's the same thing. Because it's really interesting to me that... Because I am... I definitely am someone who can pick up on weird energy in places. 
And so to go there and not feel anything and like, awesome, we're going to live in this place. And a year goes by before stuff starts happening. Eh, I don't like that. Well, here's another yeah. story. It says it happened one afternoon during the late 1990s when I was eight years old. My father was at work. My mother was outside gardening and my brother, just a cute itty bitty toddler was there with her. And my sister and I, well, we were just alone inside the house, a decent sized trailer that seemed to breed various paranormal phenomena, one of which occurred on this day. As I was walking in the notorious hallway of the trailer, so obviously things had been happening if she's referring to it as the notorious hallway. Uh, They were heading towards the master bedroom. I heard my younger sister giggling. I entered the room as curious as I was to find out just what kind of mischief she was up to this time. Sitting on the bed, there was my sister and her golden-haired doll. The odd thing about this doll is that it was given to us by some mysterious people for some unknown reason, and for some reason we grew to hate this doll. We hated her so much that we found amusement in pretending to kill the doll. Oh, gosh. There's so many things about that sentence that bugs me. It's like, it was it's like a voodoo doll? Yeah, like, it was given to them by mysterious people for some unknown reason. That's weird. And they hate the doll, and they pretended to kill the doll. So that sounds like kind of psychotic children. Yeah. It's like, let's kill the doll that okay, we well, hate. What if like, the doll like, gave them like really like bad energy like towards like the doll itself? Like, Let's think about that for a second. Because like, normally when you see like a doll, you wouldn't like have like the urge to kill it just no. because like, just because like some weird people gave it to you. No. <laughs> So it's, let's think about this for a minute. What if it wasn't the kids? What if it's what if it was the doll itself, like driving the kids to like try to like hurt the doll? Exactly, could be. And now maybe the mysterious people were only mysterious to them. Maybe it was the friends had that friend couple who would come over to visit once in a while, and they were kind of weird. Maybe they brought a doll over. I don't know. I but just what if like. What if the people gave them a doll to get rid of the doll it's like, oh. be- for the same reason? That could be it. It could be like somebody gave our kid this doll and we don't want it. Here, take this doll. Yeah. So it says, my sister was smearing my mother's red lipstick all over the doll's face, making believe it was blood. I decided to join in and we gathered some plush toy chimpanzees to gang up on the doll and attack her. Oh my god! <laughs> These do sound like this like actually the story. That's what it says. <laughs> Suddenly, my sister needed to go pee, and she asked me to accompany her to the bathroom. She was always afraid to be in the bathroom by herself. I agreed, and it, right at this moment, a thought came into my mind: this would be the perfect time to pull a prank on my sister. Okay, that part about the sister having to go to pee—that all seems real to me because. When we were kids in that house that we lived in, the bathroom was really scary. Nobody ever wanted to be in there by themselves. So this makes sense to me. And I was that kid who I would think of shit like that. And I would be like, I got an idea. I'm going to get her. Despite the fact that my sister is like seven years old or something and I'm going to terrorize her, that would be something I would have done. So that part rings true to me. I told my sister to go right into the bathroom, which was just on the other side of our room, and that I would be there in just a moment. So my sister went in, and before I followed, I seized the moment. As clandestine as I could be, I took the doll from top, the top of the bed and tucked her underneath the bed. My plan was to fool my sister into believing the doll had somehow disappeared on her own and inexplicably managed to hide under the bed on her own. Once again, I can relate to all that. I don't think I would have been killing the doll with chimpanzees and stuff, but I am the one who would have been like, this is going to scare the crap out of her. I would have done that. I know. I would have done it. Soon after I hid the doll, I entered the bathroom with my sister, and she was on the toilet, and I closed the door. While my sister was doing her business, I said, hey, let's pretend the scary doll is alive and that she is knocking on the door. Yeah, my sister ex- exclaimed. At this point, I opened the... Now, I would not have done that because I did live in a haunted house. 
<laughs> I don't want to be tempted. That's a wonderful thing I like to call foreshadowing. Exactly. I think you're right. At this, I opened the bathroom door slightly and stuck my hand out to softly knock on the door from the outside. After I knocked, I asked, who's there? Wearing a big grin on my face. And then I peered out of the door and told my sister, no one was there. I repeated the process a couple more times until I became bored and decided to sit on the tub. Are you done yet? I asked my sister, who was still sitting on the stool. Almost, she replied. Just then, we heard a soft knocking on the door. Told you, foreshadowing. So soft as it were, so soft as if it were a child knocking on the other side. Perplexed, we both looked at each other in astonishment, and I wondered to myself, who could it be that was knocking just now if it wasn't me and no one else is at home? I slowly stepped away from the tub, went towards the door, reluctantly grabbed the doorknob, and hesitantly pulled open the door. I think you can guess what happened next. The doll was on the other side. To my surprise, there was no one there on the other side of the door. Everything seemed ominously quiet and still. Then I couldn't believe my eyes. To my great horror, I spotted the doll facing me, sitting atop a tall grand dresser. It was so close I could almost touch it. I could still remember her horrid face smothered in lipstick and her piercing green eyes glaring at me in that frightful moment. I immediately shut the bathroom door, leaving my sister and me trapped inside by fear. My sister, who was still sitting on the toilet, was utterly clueless about the situation. In tears, I confessed to her about the prank I was trying to pull on her, but it turned out the prank was on me, and the prankster this time seemed to be a ghost boy, I don't know where that came from, who haunted that trailer during the dark part of my family's years. In the end, We ended up burning the doll because every time we tried to get rid of her, she kept returning. Cassandra. Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't like anything about it. I don't like that either. I don't like dolls because of that now. Well, and I think it's weird. It's like all of a sudden the ghost boy is involved. So I don't know, you know, because maybe it's not a haunted doll at all. It's just a ghost boy who keeps bringing the doll back. But then, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you do. Like, is burning the doll the right thing to do? It, I got rid of her, I guess. But, like, think about that. Like, why would you Why would you hate the doll so much? Like, what does the doll do to you? Because maybe it's the ghost boy doing all this stuff. Maybe the doll's perfectly fine. Well, and what's... But is um, it something that's causing them to... Think weird things, too, because, like, they're trying to kill this little doll and, like, smearing what, you know, it's like the lipstick is blood all over her face. Well, like, maybe it's, like, maybe it's the boy itself. Because, like, when I think of, like, when I think of that, I almost, like, think of, like, an older brother, like, trying to, like, ruin, like, a little sister's doll of some sort. Oh, so maybe the ghost boy is, like, putting the thoughts in their head or something. Yeah. Because a ghost boy would be the one who would pick on his sisters. Yeah. So maybe it's all him. I don't what know. What does this boy have against the doll? Who knows? And what? why is the hallway notoriously... Creepy. Creepy. What, what's up with the hallway of the trailer? What happened to the hallway? Okay, because I think that happened in the 90s, right? Was that... Yeah, it's an early, like... It's a late 1990s. So did... Cassandra grow up to be okay? Is she still haunted by things? And what about her little sister? Is her little sister traumatized because of things that Cassandra might have done to her? What else has a doll done? What is going on? Did they move out of the trailer? Did all of this stuff stop? So many questions and yet not many answers. We have no we have no answers to this one. There's and there's way too many questions about all of that. That stuff's creepy. That's why I don't want dolls in my house. If you have a real ghost story, we'd like to hear it. Call in any time. It's 855-853-4802. Write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You can become a premium subscriber. You'll get ad-free versions of the show, advanced episodes, access to the archive. Sign up today through Apple Podcasts. You can also sign up through patreon.com slash realghoststories.com. 
or at ghostpodcast.com. And for all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thanks for listening.